The Intercity Firm, ICF, is a group of West Ham United affiliated English football hooligans that was primarily active in the 1970s, 1980s and early 1990s. The name was given because away games were attended using Intercity trains. They were the focus of the 1985 hooligan documentary on Thames Television. History. The Mile End Boys and Essex East London Firm, two additional West Ham organisations, helped to create the firm. In the 1976 campaign, ICF was founded. Cass Pennant, who wrote about football hooliganism in the 1990s and 2000s, is the most well-known person connected with the ICF. As a black Londoner, Pennant claims in his book, Congratulations you have just met the ICF, that the ICF was neither racist nor right-wing. The front cover of the book's original print features Bill Gardner, one of the Mile End Boys. The firm also has a connection to Carlton Leach, the lead character in the movie Rise of the Foot Soldier. Later on, he started to get involved in the criminal underground in London and Essex, together with Pat Tate, Tony Tucker, and Craig Rolfe. To concentrate on selling drugs and taxing traffickers, they turned their attention away from the hazards of football conflicts. The Rettenden murders in Essex resulted in the violent deaths of Tate, Tucker, and Rolfe. 1980s ICF calling card. Calling cards that were left on victims were invented by the ICF. Congratulations, you just met the ICF, was printed on them. Other football clubs also started using calling cards, like the Chelsea Headhunters. The Firm, a 1988 movie directed by Alan Clark, was based on the ICF. Bex Bissell, the captain of the ICC Intercity crew, is portrayed by Gary Oldman. ICF members served as consultants on the movie. Although the letters GSE, Green Street Elite, were used instead of the ICF in the 2005 movie Green Street and its sequels, both are based on the ICF. Now let's look at the timeline of events that made the ICF what it is today. 1967 West Ham v's Man United. This is apparently the one and only time the home end of West Ham was taken. The Red Army arrived en masse at 1 p.m. and managed to get into the North Bank. When West Ham arrived, they were locked out and had to enter the South Bank instead. I don't think this was really a taking of an end, as I believe the home fans must at least be present, but anyway, that's the story my West Ham buddies tell me. nineteen seventy two Millwall v West Ham Harry Cripps testimonial a legendary battle according to people who were there some people who were there have likened the scene to a war zone between the hated foes pre ICF this was in the days of the Mile End mob of West Ham who entered the Millwall home section of the ground and stayed there until the end defending their ground against all kinds of attacks from the bushwhackers the two sets of fans went to fight both inside and outside the old den stadium, setting the stage for 30 more years of violence, in an atmosphere described by one witness as pure wickedness and something I had never encountered as a football fan. 1974 Liverpool v's West Ham, League Cup match. Some say this was the prelude to the ICF. Three football specials turn up at Anfield but after the game, West Ham are chased all round Anfield with some being stabbed, others having a good kicking and some even losing their clothes to the Scousers. X Mile End mob member Grant Fleming talks about it in Cass Pennant's book, Congratulations, You Have Just Met the ICF, where he describes the event as being rough, very rough and an eye-opener. 1974 Chelsea v's West Ham. 
West Ham's newly formed ICF turn up M. Nas in the shed at Chelsea's Stamford Bridge. Usually the domain of Chelsea's home fans, the ICF stay in the shed throughout the game and fight off any Chelsea attempts to retake their end. Several ICF members claim in recent books to have taken the shed at least five times in the 70s. 1975 Middlesbrough v West Ham, the Battle of Borough. After the debacle at Anfield, the 300 ICF find Imbro's main firm, 1,000 strong, waiting for them after the match. Bricks rain down from a park across the road from the ICF. The ICF take the barrage, then climb the railings to the park where the borough firm are, much to the borough's disbelief, the ICF run at the borough, who scatter. The train station is two miles away and the ICF are still attacked from side streets by a variety of borough mobs, some small, some big, but manage to repel all attacks. It's much talked about in Cass's book, Congratulations, you just met the ICF. 1975 West Ham v's Man United. This is a famous match well documented for its crowd trouble. Some say most of the problems was overcrowding in the South Bank where the notorious at the time, Man United fans were enclosed. But from what I understand, the West Ham South Bankers were attacking the Man United also causing more overcrowding and lots of general trouble ensued. Forum fan, Stepney, also told us. That day on the South Bank, I was there. Man. United had a reputation at the time for destroying trains and town centres everywhere they went. They flocked to the stadium in enormous numbers on that day, hoping to repeat their performance from 1967, when they flooded the South Bank and defeated the Irons 1-6 on the pitch. 1976 Charlton v's West Ham. This match was irrelevant really as it's the following violence between West Ham and Millwall fans at a train station called New Cross where a Millwall fan, Ian Pratt, was killed by a train. Millwall had faced Orient the same evening, with all four clubs being local rivals. After the incident West Ham hooligans constructed the chant, West Ham boys, we've got brains, we throw Millwall under trains. 1976 Aston Villa v's West Ham. West Ham claimed to have taken the Holt end in 1976. There are numerous accounts of this from West Ham's ICF all disputed by Villa fans. Cass Pennant mentions it in his book, Cass, where he describes the West Ham youth as being the perpetrators of this attempt. The event was also mentioned in the Hooligans book by Nick Lowe's and Andy Nichols. It appears that the ICF as they are now known, get into the Holt end at 1 p.m., then at 2.5 a all meet up at the back of the Holt end, put on their balaclavas and hats and scream, ICF, attacking from the rear and downwards towards the Villa faithful, some of whom, in turn run for their lives and onto the pitch. Once the Villa reorganized, they attacked from below and managed to press the ICF into a corner of the Holt end, where they were saved by the old Bill and escorted around into the away enclosure. 1977 West Ham v's Forest. Much described in the Cass Pennant book ICF, the ICF can't believe it when a big forest firm of 600 turn up on two football specials. Once inside the South Bank, the ICF attack the forest, creating carnage. The forest leg in onto the pitch, then try to get into neutral territory, unfortunately, there isn't any neutral territory, and they are removed from the ground for their own safety. The song heard around the ground was, to the tune of Q Sarah Sarah, whatever will be, will be, why did you leave the ground, at 10 to 3. Apparently, the last anyone saw of the forest mob, was waiting to get back on their trains at 3 p.m., so they all missed the game. This has been verified by forest fans on their forum. 1980 Newcastle v's West Ham. This is the infamous, petrol bomb, incident, when a real petrol bomb was thrown into the West Ham section. The Hammers fans had already smashed up a Newcastle pub and after the match there was more trouble around the streets of St. James Park. 1982 Arsenal vs West Ham. 
The ICF went into the Arsenal North Bank but this time Arsenal fought back much to ICF's surprise as they usually took it unopposed. Smoke bomb let off and pandemonium ensued with the ICF on the back foot, until the police moved in and escorted the ICF to the clock end. 1984 Birmingham v's West Ham, FA Cup 1984. In the second half, West Ham fans invaded the pitch several times, and some Blues fans retaliated, resulting in mayhem on the pitch, fighting in the stands, and turmoil after the match, which was by all accounts, terrifying. nineteen eighty five manchester united v's west ham west ham played manchester united at old trafford and the icf were out in force for the trip to the northwest of england this video shows narrated footage of the events leading up to the game and how the hooligans give the old bill the slip the icf's organization skills come into play to give the police and opposition the act of surprise to catch him out this was all recorded by a film crew and the title of the film is hooligan nineteen eighty six the ferry incident on their separate ways to pre-season friendlies five hundred fans from both west ham and manchester united clash after taunts from west ham fans over the stabbing of a young manchester united fan at upton park the previous year during the carnage five people were stabbed and needed emergency treatment the ferry had to return to its port of harwich and police reinforcements had to quell the violence after investigations three West Ham fans were jailed for six years and two others acquitted. 1988 Millwall v's West Ham. The intercity firm turned out in massive numbers for the match in Millwall and attacked a pub that Millwall fans were drinking in. Large-scale disorder broke out as the police lost control of the situation and described the scene as, West Ham taking liberties at Millwall, they come to Millwall's ground, they smash their pubs up and to them it's a victory. 2006 Palermo v's West Ham. Following, a huge battle, with Palermo supporters in Sicily, at least 20 West Ham supporters were detained and another six received injuries. Rival groups in Palermo's Teatro Massimo flung bottles and chairs at each other beginning around midnight and continuing for more than an hour. According to Palermo police spokesman Virgilio Alberelli, the altercation involved 500 people, and when police attempted to break it up, they were also attacked with missiles. West Ham supporters, behaved like animals, roaming the streets with bottles in hand searching for anyone to fight, a witness told Guardian Unlimited. 17 people, including five police officers, were brought to the hospital with minor injuries during the more than an hour it took police in riot gear to bring the situation under control. The West Ham supporters were loaded into three buses and transported away from the area after police were able to eventually settle the situation. 2009 West Ham vs Millwall. Just like the old days with one man stabbed, 20 others injured, pitch invasions, fighting inside and outside the ground, 200 riot cops, 500 other coppers, only 13 arrests. Seems to be West Ham orientated mainly. 2009. Things have been relatively quiet since this game and the Hammers have moved to their new ground the London Stadium. Most of the old-timers hate the new stadium and long for a return to the good old Berlin ground. Even so, there have still been the odd sporadic conflict with the latest being v Anderlecht's hooligans in 2022 and then against Lyon in the both the home and away Europa League matches. These are only some of the historic ICF stories, there are so many more. If you know of any stories we may be interested in, 
then please contact us and keep watching for more updates. And don't forget to subscribe. It helps our channel massively.